good day everyone. We are glad to be back and here is Asian News. Cambodian starts COVID-19 vaccination for ages 3 and 5. Cambodia starts vaccinating children as young as 3 years old against COVID-19, making it one of the first countries to cover the under-5 age group in a push to cover its entire population of 60 million. The inoculation drive for holders started in the capital city, Phnom Penh. Hundreds of people queued outside clinics where medical staff in personal protection gear administered the vaccines to teary-eyed or wailing children. According to the Our World in Data website, the Southeast Asian country has vaccinated over 90% of its population among the highest rates in the region and in January started rolling out a fourth dose of high-risk groups. Overall, there have been 3,024 deaths and more than 127,000 infections in Cambodia. Thousands flee from airstrikes when fighting erupts in Myanmar. Burma Army airstrikes hit this village here. The village in Kaya State borders Thailand, where soldiers have met months of resistance for the Karine National Defense Force, one of several militia groups that is challenging the junta's rule. Local media and aid groups say Myanmar's military deployed ground troops and launched air and artillery strikes against rebel forces in the country's east region and prompting thousands of people to flee. Myanmar's military council could not immediately be reached for comments, and state media outlets have not mentioned the fight. Two people were killed and three were wounded. The Myanmar Now News site reported three were killed in another village attacked by a jet. A Karenian National Defense Force representative was unable to confirm reports of casualties, but says heavy fighting had taken place. Reuters was unable to independently verify the information. According to the United Nations Humanitarian Agency, at least 90,000 people have seen been displaced by fighting in Kaya State, which estimates 441,000 people have fled unrest in Myanmar since the coup. Philippine trained rural teacher takes class to the rural children. Sitting on a wooden trolley fitted with blackboards and bookshelves, four young teachers rumble their long little used railroad in the southern Philippines to their students. Their target students are young impoverished children who live along the railroad tracks and were missing out on in-person classes during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Philippines starts a phased reopening of schools in November after nearly two years of online learning, but many remained shut due to the Omicron variant. Samboy de Leon Yala says the school closure have left many poverty-stricken children behind due to their lack of access to computers, tablets, and the internet. Nyala and his group of student volunteers push their trolley to up to three different neighborhoods in a day, three times a week, so that they can teach subjects like math and English to over 60 children. They started their initiative in November of 2021 and have been collecting learning materials from the nations to use for their classes. The Philippines has recorded more than 3.24 million COVID-19 cases and nearly 50,000 deaths overall. It reopened to foreign tourists in February even as cases surged because of the Omicron variant. South Korea will join other countries by imposing economic sanctions on Russia. President Moon Jae-in says South Korea will join other countries by imposing economic sanctions on Russia over its military operations in Ukraine. Officials and media says Russian forces fired missiles at several cities in Ukraine and landed troops on its coast after President Vladimir Putin authorized what he called a special military operation in the east. At the National Security Council meeting in Seoul, Moon says that Ukraine's sovereignty territory and independence must be respected. 
Seoul's foreign ministry spokesman Choi Yong Sam says the country has been closely discussing countermeasures with the allies, including the United States, and have no choice but participate in sanctions such as export controls if Russia conducts a full-scale war in any form. South Korea calls for calm as COVID-19 cases reach new record. South Korea's health authority says they are changing the COVID-19 quarantine framework from a stance of suppressing confirmed cases to an approach of minimizing serious cases. Deaths have slowly ticked up, reaching a new record of high 99, but South Korean authority says real-world data shows people infected with the Omicron coronavirus variant are nearly 75% less likely to develop serious illness or die than those who contracted the Delta variant. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency says South Korea reported 171,452 new coronavirus cases, another daily record and a sharp increase from 99,573 a day before. A study by the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency of some 67,200 infections confirmed since December showed the Omicron variant's severity and death rates averaged 0.38% and 0.18% respectively compared with 1.4% and 0.7% for the Delta cases. Chinese Foreign Minister hold a phone conversation with Russian Foreign Minister on Ukraine issue. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov briefed Wong on the evolution of the situation in Ukraine and Russia's position, saying the United States and North Atlantic Treaty Organization have broken their commitments, continuously expanded eastward, refused to implement the new Minsk Agreement signed in 2015, and violated the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2202. Lavrov adds, Russia forces to take necessary measures to safeguard its own rights and interests. Noting that China has always respected the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries and China recognized the complex and special historical context of the Ukraine issue and understands Russia's legitimate security concerns. Wong affirms China maintains that the Cold War mentality should be completely abandoned and a balanced, effective and sustainable European security mechanism should be finally established through dialogue and negotiation. China rejects Russia's move invasion and urges Ukraine to stay home. China rejects calling Russia's moves on Ukraine an invasion and urge all sides to exercise restraint and advise its citizens to stay home or at least take the precaution of displaying a Chinese flag if they needed to drive anywhere. Officials and media says Russian forces fired missiles at several cities in Ukraine and landed troops on its coast after President Vladimir Putin authorized what he called a special military operation in the east. During a packed daily media briefing in Beijing, Hua Chunying, spokesperson at China's foreign ministry, bridled a journalist characterization of Russia's action. China will release energy reserves in response to Russia's attack in Ukraine, which has sent oil prices surging. Hua says that all countries should work together to jointly protect global energy security. Indonesia expresses its condemnation and concern over the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Prihatin atas eskalasi konflik bersenjata di wilayah Ukraina. Indonesia's foreign ministry spokesperson, Teuku Faiza Shia, says Indonesia concern about the escalation of the armed conflict in the territory of Ukraine, which seriously endangers the safety of the people and has an impact on peace in the region. He affirms the observance of international law and the United Nations Charter regarding the territorial integrity of a country, as well as condemning any actions that clearly constitute a violation of the territorial and sovereignty of the country. Also, it is about reaffirming that all parties continue to prioritize negotiations and diplomacy to stop conflicts and prioritize peaceful settlements. Meanwhile, officials and media say Russian forces fired missiles at several cities in Ukraine and landed troops on its coast after President Vladimir Putin authorized what he called a special military operation in the east. Yeah. On the left. On the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just... 
And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, Julius Posu, for the red drop. We'll see you soon.